Good evening, everybody. I hope you are well. I pray that you are keeping faith. Now, for the last few weeks, we've been talking about our health, divine healing. I uh, showed you uh, many scriptures uh, which we spoke about many ways uh, about healing and God's will about it. Now, tonight, I want to close this chapter about divine healing and I want you to have a pen and paper ready I'm going to give you a number of scripture that are going to to inspire you in knowing what the will of God is concerning your divine health so while while we are speaking get yourself some pa uh, some paper get for yourself a pen and I'm going to give you scriptures and I'm going good I'm going to go through them with you and uh, these are part of the healing scriptures that god has given to us part of the promises of god we need to get this into our system we need to get to understand god wants us well because it's healthy bodies that do the, the work of god and god and god is going to I pray God's going to, to help you understand that the will of God is for us to be well. Not only prosperous, and we spoke about prosperity, not only, not only prosperous, but also well in a good condition. So let's start by going to the book of Matthew. Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 12. And we're going to read from verse 35. And this is something very important that we're going to read here. Matthew 12, verse 35. 35. It says, A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So yeah, yeah, Jesus is giving us an insight of the end days judgment. And, and again, this the word is, sp is spoken to us believers not to outsiders but to the church and he says to us here we will give an account for every from every idle word that we've spoken now is that is that now when we so spoke, speak about idle it's not necessary like swear words or bad language, not necessary. When he talks about idle words, it, think about of the word idle. I want you to think about your car, your motorbike. When you stand at the red light, your motorbike idles. Your car idles. According to, according to law, when you stop at the red light in a car, you pull on, pull on your, your handbrake and you put your car in neutral. That causes the car to idle. What does that mean? The car is not going anywhere. So when, God, when Jesus speaks about idle words, he speaks about words that mean nothing. Mean words that won't do anything for you. Words that will lead you nowhere. Words that will uh, build nothing. So we fill, we fill the voids and, and you, you might say, yeah, but well, if, if those words mean nothing, then nothing's going to happen. And that's the problem. Because in mathematics, uh, when, you, when you say naught plus naught equals naught, that means if I say nothing and I do nothing, I will, I will get nothing. You see, <laughs> we need to understand the concept of words. 
the book, the book of Proverbs told us, and we've read that we've read many many things. I mean, we we focused on Proverbs chapter four for so many uh, weeks. You should know by now, life and death are in the power of the tongue. So, in other words, my tongue, my words will produce. We cannot help talking but we can choose what we say know this we can't say i'm not going to speak anymore no you are created to speak but i'm going i've got a choice what i'm going to say i've got a choice and this is this is where we are you might you might say oh i'm just talking i'm just talking nonsense i'm not saying much you know, sorry. that's a problem we don't talk much we don't talk, we don't we, what we talk doesn't make any sense that means tomorrow nothing will be nothing will be happening see our words construct our words destroy our words give life our words give death there's no, even if your words are idle, then you give death because you give nothing. And nothingness is death. It's idleness. When you stand still, you idle. And God wants us to move forward. So he said, God says here, now look at this. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart. You see now, this is, this is where the treasure is. There's another passage where it says where your treasure is, there your heart will be. See, so now he says to us, out of the good treasure of the heart, now it's out of the heart, the mouth will speak. This is what he says. Out of the heart, the mouth will speak. It will speak whatever the heart contains. Now, now we should know by now, the ears and the eyes are the gateway, the, the input of the heart. In other words, we, what we look at feeds our heart. What we listen to feeds our heart we don't have option we, you can you can say what you want about oh, no 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 i'm just listening to this rubbish it doesn't be you know it doesn't it doesn't affect me it does you don't realize it it does everything we hear everything we see affects us and if we are not applying faith against that then that will consume us so, so Jesus is telling us here, by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. So whether you speak negative word or you speak no words, those idle, these are idle words. I see what you say. These are idle words. That means words that either go nowhere or words that do nothing. And by these you shall be justified. So by, by concluding on these things, God wants us to move forward. And the way that we move forward, half of it is through our mouth. It's what we say. It's what we say. I, 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 I read an article. It says here, it's a medical research article. It says, medical science has discovered that part of the brain which controls human speech look at this is connected to every nerve cell of the body and the nerve cells control your body how amazing is that god knew that because he called, he made us god knew that that's why he, he tells us what the heart is your mouth will speak and my body will react to the words i speak and he knew that and we found we found out now in in, 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 the, in the 20th century, we find out that our words are connected to the, cell, the nerve cells of our bodies. In other words, we react to the words that we speak and to the words that are spoken to us as well. How many people have been hurt by pe words of uh, people that have spoken against you? How many people have been abused verbally and it caused a mental abuse it caused a it called is it, it caused a spiritual abuse by through what people would say 
Now, I've spoken in the past about it. When I was very young, I was uh, bullied by words. Not physically bullied, but by words. People would just bully me by words. Telling me I was no good. Telling me I was, I was, I was uh, overweight. I was this, I was that. And that affected me so much that I didn't want to go to school. Every Monday more, every Monday after after a weekend at home, every Monday, I would be sick. And my mom saw that I was vomiting and I was doing all this. Why? Because I hated going to school. Because I had to take the bus. Because the school was about 40 k's from home. I had to take the bus to go to school. And on the bus all the way to school, I was bullied. And one way... For me to defend myself, although I was very small and the guys who were bullying me were big guys, uh, the, the only way to, for me to, to avoid to be bullied was to stay home. And my and I, my body was reacting to that and I, and I was sick. And I, it was like clockwork. On a Monday morning, at the time where I, I was, my mom would work, work, wake me up to go to school, I would be sick and vomiting and have headaches and everything. And then my mom would say, okay, just stay in bed. You're not going to school today. You feel too bad. And I, it was like clockworks. The school started at six o'clock, at seven o'clock in the morning. By eight o'clock, nine o'clock, I was in perfect health. Because my mom, at nine o'clock, my mom wouldn't send you to school because there was no transport and the school was far away. So you, you would stay home for the day. By eight or nine o'clock, I would be perfectly fine. No trace of headache, no vomiting. I was hungry, I was eating and everything. Words, negative words, destroy. They will, I mean, people have been abused for years and years and years. Mentally abused. And you look at these people, they are broken people. And praise God, God has come to heal the broken hearted. Have you ever thought of that? Luke 4, verse 18 says to us, the Spirit of God, Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he, has, for, for he has anointed me to preach to the brokenhearted, to preach healing to the brokenhearted. So God is well aware that, even as, I, as I'm speaking to, uh, tonight, many there are many that are watching that might be brokenhearted because of mental abuse, because, because of spiritual abuse, because of what people have said, even when they were young. And they have not been set free, for, uh, set free from that. Maybe you, you have not been set free from that. And it's never too late to be set free. You see, this is a, 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 like a, a bondage that the devil has upon you. Every time you want to do something for God, even at this, at this time, you want to do something for God, all these, these thoughts from, from way back then are brought back to your memory. And you think, no, I'm not good enough for this. I don't think God wants to listen to me. Me, no way. God can, can use a pastor, but God can use a elders or anybody or somebody prominent or somebody that has got money, somebody that's got degree. We are so, I can say, used to have excuses to cover up the bruises inside. We, we make all sorts of excuses. I've, seen, I've known people, they just don't want to go out. They don't want to go out in the street. Uh, they'll find it, oh no, it's too cold today. Oh, it's, no, it's too hot today. Oh, there's too much wind. Oh, it looks like rain. Oh, I don't feel like going today. No, I want to do quickly. I want to do this. I want to quickly. I want to do this. I still have to do the floors. I still have to do the... All kind of excuses to cover up the hurt inside. And many people are like that. Many people, even Christians, that go to church, uh, uh, they, can, they, they can have a smile there, but God knows you are hurting inside. And even as I'm speaking now, I mean, I, I, I wrote some of these things down, and even as I speak now, I know that some people that are listening, if you are hurting inside, God can heal that. He did it for me, He can do it for you. Praise God. I'm just want to, I just want to pray for you right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just bring this person and these persons that I, I can sense over, over this video call, Lord. I can sense that some people are hurting right now, Father. They are bruised inside. I pray, Father, Lord, that you will deliver them for that. I pray, Lord, that, that those bruises will be healed by the mighty hand of God. I pray, Lord, that the virtue of Jesus Christ will flow through them. And those bruises will be healed, mended, 
restored, renewed in the name of Jesus. Father, give you praise and glory, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the brokenhearted as well, Father. Maybe there's people out there that are brokenhearted. I pray, Lord, that you will restore their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So, Jesus came to restore and to renew and to rebuild all that was bruised, all that was broken, all that was stolen from the devil. Now, I'm going to give you some scripture. I'm just going. I don't want you to write. Don't, don't write the whole scripture. Just write this, the scripture, and then you can go in your own time. I, I just, I just, I feel, I felt like you know tonight. I want to give you some scriptures to build on. I did it for my life. I'd, i had written all these scriptures down. I put them all over my, I put them uh, in my room, I put them on the fridge door, I put them at the back of the toilet where you go to the loo, I put them at the door, when you're in the toilet you can still read them. The Bible says, put my word as frontlet before your eyes. And if you're in need, just tonight, if, you're, if, you, if there's a need tonight, which I know there are, I'm, go I'm going to give you these scriptures, write them down, then in your own time, go to your, go to your Bible, Write them out. Write them out. And make them on a piece of paper. Not in capital letters. Cut them out. And go and stick them wherever you are the most. If you are always in the kitchen, put them on your fridge. If you like to read, you've got a special place where you, can, you like to read a book or something uh, that you are there. Put them there in front of you so you will see them. Your eyes will be on them. And your, when your eyes are on them, you start feeding your heart when you, when you just... Uh, speak that scripture out. With him, I, I've known people, uh, some friend of mine, uh, when they lie down on the bed, they, they stick the, paper, the, the the scripture on the on those on the ceiling. So when they lie in bed, they can see the scriptures. Now that, that, I know that's identical, and but how desperate are you? How desperate are you? You know, when I was in the Rama Bible School, that's in nineteen eighties. I discovered some radical people there. I mean, I thought I was radical, but some of these students were so radical. One person I was I, I was looking at uh, some students that were together in class, and yet he, had, he was sitting down next to me, and his leg was folded, and I could see the soles of his feet of his shoes, and I saw there were some marks on the shoes, the sole of the shoes, and I'm thinking. What what's those marks on your shoes? You know, you got those nice shoes. Uh, the sole is like light, and you can see. And then we, when you had a chance to, to 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 speak, I asked him, "What's on your shoes?" And he took his shoe out and showed me. He had written down scriptures on the sole of his shoes, and I thought to myself, "But if you walk, you can't see that. It's on the bottom of the shoe." He says, "No, no, no, no. I write scripture to to, to let the devil." Have something to read while I walk on his on his head. <laughs> That's radical. Because the Bible says he's under my feet. So I give the devil something to read while he's under there. That's radical. I thought, wow, that's radical. But when you are desperate, you do radical things. How desperate are you to be healed? How desperate are you to move forward with God? But God will not will not cause you to move forward until you are healed inside because you remember you when you minister to people you minister out of the fullness but if there's a hurt inside of you that hasn't been dealt with that hasn't been restored that hasn't been renewed that hasn't been healed then you're going to minister wherever wherever you minister you're going to minister out of that hurt and that's not going to bring healing to people not as accurate as when you minister out of a restored heart. So take, take note of this. When you minister to people, you minister out of a good treasure of the heart. All right. So here, here we go. I'm going, to, I'm going to read those scriptures to you. 
I really feel that some of you need those scriptures tonight. And I pray that as you as you read the scriptures, uh, I'll give you I'll tell you where the scripture is. Just write the, the scripture down, not the whole thing, just where the scripture is. Alright? Here we go. Are you ready? Is your pen and paper ready? Here we go. My God is the Lord who heals me. That's found in Exodus 15, verse 26. So just write down Exodus 15, 26. He has taken away sicknesses from our midst. Exodus 23, verse 25. He has taken away all sickness from me, including all evil diseases of Egypt. That's Deuteronomy 7, verse 15. Are you writing it down? I choose life, for he is the length of my days. That's Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 to 20. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 to 20. The Lord has given me rest according to all he has promised. Not one word of God, of, of, of his good promise of health, has failed. That's 1 King 8, verse 56. Now, these are all promises of God, brothers and sisters. No evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. Psalm 91 verse 10. Now, I think this is one of the most adequate scripture for today. It's one of the closest scriptures we can have in our house. No evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague... Hello? Coronavirus, any plague come my near, near my dwelling. That's Psalm 91 verse 10. My God satisfies me with long life and shows me his salvation. Psalm 91 verse 16. The Lord heals all my diseases. Psalm 103 verse 3. Remember, uh, bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. For he heals all my diseases. He sent his word and he healed him and delivered me from my destruction. Psalm 107, verse 20. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Psalm 118, verse 17. You can pause the video if I'm too fast. <laughs> That's one lucky thing. God's word is health and medicine to all my flesh. Proverbs 4, verse 22. We've, we've looked at that word so many times. The tongue of the wise is health. Proverbs 12, verse 18. Jesus bore my grief, sickness, weakness, and affliction. He carried my sorrows and my pains. He, has wound, he was wounded and tormented for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. By his stripes I am healed and made whole. That's the Amplified Version of Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. God has restored my health. He has healed my wounds. That's Jeremiah 30, verse 17. I am strong. Joel. 3 verse 10 Joel verse 3 verse 10 Affliction shall not rise up a second time That's Nahum 1 9 Nahum chapter 1 verse 9 I hope you're getting all these You can just rewind them if you want uh, on this video The Son of Righteousness shall arise in me with healing in his wings. Malachi 4, verse 2. Jesus healed all who were sick. He bore my infirmities and sickness. Matthew 8, 16 to 17. Jesus healed every sickness and every disease. Matthew 9, verse 35. When I lay hands on, my, on the sick, in the name of Jesus, they shall recover. Mark 16, Verse 18, the power of the Lord is present to heal me. Luke 5, verse 17, the same spirit 
who raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in me and makes me alive in my mortal flesh. Romans 8 verse 11 Jesus went out doing good, healing all those that were oppressed for, of the devil because God was with him. That's uh, Acts 10 verse 38. I am crucified with Christ. Christ lives in me, the life I live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2 verse 20. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, been made a curse for me, so that the blessing of Abraham shall come upon me through Jesus Christ. Healing is a part of the blessing. Galatians 3 verse 13 to 14. The prayer of faith saves the sick, and the Lord raises him up. James 5 verse 15. By the stripe of Jesus Christ I am healed. 1 Peter 2 verse 24. I prosper and I am healthy, even as my soul prospers. 3 John verse 2. Now you, you, there are, these are enough scriptures to keep you going. Yes, some more. We're not done yet. The mouth of the righteous is a well of life. Of life. Proverbs 10, verse 11. A man shall be satisfied with the good by the fruit of his mouth. Proverbs 12, verse 14. The tongue of the wise is health. Proverbs 12, verse 18. He that keepeth, keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Proverbs 13, verse 3. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Proverbs 15, verse 4. Pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Proverbs 16, verse 24. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be full. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 18, verse 20 to 21. The Word became flesh. John 1, verse 14. Now these are some of the scriptures that I felt God wanted us to hear tonight. Now let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians. And we're going to read from chapter 9 and verse 27. Actually verse 26. 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27 it says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so I fight I, not as one that beat at the end. In other words, I don't, it's the same as when we talk about idle words. You don't, you don't do just go like that when you, a boxer doesn't, doesn't do that all the time. He uses a, 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 a ball that he, a punching ball, or he spares with somebody else. He says, when you do, when you are uncertain of your words, you are like a man that boxes in the air. Now, you're not eating anything, you're not practicing muscles or nothing. There's no resistance. Look at verse 27. It says, But I keep my body and bring it under subjection, lest, by, lest that by any means, when I've preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. In other words, I'm not going to speak to others unless those words mean something to me. That's what he says. I keep my body, I bring it out to subjection. Your body, now listen, the medical research said that the vocal cords are linked to the nervous cell of the, of the body. Right? So here he says, uh, I'm going to not follow what my body, I'm not going to speak the way my body feels. I'm going to tell my body how to feel. I'm going to dictate my body. This is why we have the Word of God. These promises, when you tell these promises, you are speaking to your flesh, you are speaking to your spirit, you are speaking to your soul. 
See, God, God's words are descriptive. God, God, when God speaks, something happens. When you speak, something happens. But when you speak the word of God, something happens. So yeah, but yeah, Paul says to us, I speak to my body. Not, no, I don't speak to my body idle words like if I, if I was a boxer and I, and I just beat the wind all the time. No, no, I'm going to speak words that will mean something. I'm going to be it's, it's words that are going to have an impact on my life. And we, we see that, that Paul ha was disciplining his body as well as his spirit. And he says uh, it was under the anointing of God, under the anointing of the resurrection of Christ Jesus. He says, oh, that I might know him and the power of his, his resurrection. So yeah, you have Paul said, telling to us, when be careful, because you can't help speaking, but you can have a choice to what you speak. Our words are important. I, I, don't, I think I, I spoke this this morning in the church when I said, what you say will impact people, either negatively, either positively. It's up to us to choose what we say. What are you going to say? What are you going to speak? Remember, your life is a garden. What do you want your garden to produce? If you, if you speak idle words, your garden will produce nothing. Because even in mathematics, no plus no equals no. Doesn't matter what, what, what function you use, it will produce nothing. Nothing multiplied by nothing equals nothing. So ask yourself the question, what does my garden produce? And if you have, if you realize that you, you've spoken the wrong things, that's okay. We need to grow up. We need to own up. And says, Father God, I negate everything I've said. In the name of Jesus, that is negative. And now from now on, I'm going to choose the word that I speak. I'm going to choose the word that I speak. And I'm going to speak words that I want my garden to produce. Praise God. We need to be aware of the words that we speak. It's vitally important, not only for our lives, but for the judgment day, because we're going to answer to these words. God is going to ask us, say, why? Why did you say these things? Why did you why did you want your garden to produce weeds? Let's make an effort not to stop talking but to choose what we say. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. God keep you. May this week be a week of revelation. And may you take your time and say, I'm going to choose what I say. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. God keep you. Shalom.